Hey everybody, it's not Thursday and Geeks of the Week, and I'm Mario, and I have a question right off the bat. Does Valentine's Day candy expire? Because I have some, and I'm going to eat it, it's going to happen, so I'm just curious. On to the video. Steph couldn't be here this week because her internet wasn't up yet, but she still made a video for pickles. She spoils that dog. Power, let me know some of your favorite genres so I could further recommend certain comics to you. And if everyone wants to see a Jack Frost fan art that looks like a legit poster, go to Pyro's art page. Luluka wasn't here this week because I assume she was having a meeting about having meetings because they're trying to drive her insane. So stay strong, Lu. And Nikki, I first heard about Much Ado About Nothing from your video, and when I saw the trailer, I was grinning like an idiot because of all the weed and people that were in it. And you as a mime is terrifying, and I mean that as a compliment because I'm scared of mimes since I'm claustrophobic and they usually put me in the box. So please don't put me in the box. That's the two rules in life. You don't put baby in the corner and you don't put me in the box. Here's one quick bit of comic news and then some awesome videos because that's what I do on the internet all day long. Watch videos and stop being productive. But I regret nothing. It was announced this week that DC will be telling Batman's origin story in the DC New 52. It's going to be called Batman Year Zero, written by Scott Snyder and art by Greg Capullo. I am both excited and nervous about this because although Snyder and Capullo have done an excellent job with Batman, Year One by Frank Miller is such a classic it's hard to live up to. Even though Snyder's already come out and said it's not a retelling, they're just modernizing it. I'm looking forward to it. Snyder has earned his trust with me. It's set to come out in July and I will be checking that out. You know how this works. Cool videos, all the links below. Starting with Kick-Ass 2 the trailers out. And yes, yes it's as badass as you think it is. By the looks of it, just like part 1, they're not going to be holding back. So get ready for some crazy action and the most creative use of cuss words. I think this is going to be one of the rare occasions where the movie is actually better than the comic. Want to see Wonder Woman beat up some Nazis? Check out this great fan made trailer. Which will make you wonder why hasn't there been a Wonder Woman TV show or movie in a long, long time? Oh, because some ass face at DC drove away Josh Whedon who was working on one. Real smart move. But the Avengers thank you. You know who deserves to be saved? Super Mario. Check out this video of a dad who hacked the classic Donkey Kong game so his daughter could play as the princess and save Super Mario. Speaking of video games, have you seen Record Ralph? You haven't? Why not? What's going on? Leave comments below on why. And don't tell me you don't have time, you find the time. But if you have seen it and you want to see it in one minute, check out this great live action version in Wreck-It Ralph in 60 seconds. This week I'll be reviewing Age of Ultron issue 2, written by Brian Michael Bendis and art by Brian Hitch. And this is set in the not too distant future as Ultron has taken over and there's only a few pockets of resistance left. In this issue the heroes are trying to survive and trying to come up with a plan of attack. So this issue was good again. I've always been a fan of dark futures. They make for the most interesting stories. You have more of a liberty to do more with these characters and see them in a new light. Plus there's the whole curiosity of how did things get so bad? What happened? So my interest is definitely peaked. Here's my problem. It's pricey at $3.99. It's going to be 10 issues. And then there's the whole Brian Michael Bendis track record with event things, which isn't that good. So this issue does deserve 4 out of 5. But I wouldn't blame you for your serving judgment for later on because it can go downhill really fast. Next, Batman and Robin issue 18, written by Peter J. Tomasi and art by Pat Gleason. And after the events of Batman and Inc. issue 8, here Bruce is dealing with the aftermath. There wasn't a line of dialogue in this issue, so the story relied heavily on Gleason's artwork to tell it, and he did a superb job. You really see Bruce's rage and grief. I'm still unhappy and saddened with what DC did to Damien because he's a character I grew to love, he's not easily replaced, and how can you have a Batman without a Robin? As unhappy as I am, Steph is straight pissed. Whoever okayed this at DC better stay away from her because she will get you. I was reading her Twitter, she didn't particularly like this issue and I can see why. I still think it's worth checking out even though you could read through it in about 2 or 3 minutes. Still, I suggest you take in each panel, just soak it in, and I read this issue 4.5 out of 5. Next, Avengers Academy issue 6, written by Dennis Hopeless and art by Kev Walker. And this comic is about teen heroes being forced to fight each other until their death. Think Battle Royale or Hunger Games. This particular issue had teens doing what they do best and that's get clicky. As Avengers Academy members are off on their own, as are Brodick Academy and the Runaways. The standout in this issue comes from the conflict between the Brodick members. 
Hopefully I spent the first six issues really building up this cast of characters, giving you insight into them, and now he's making them grow more. You see how volatile their interactions are. I'm always a fan of teen hero books because usually they just get ignored and this really is focusing on them. I have been enjoying Avengers Academy and I read this 4.5 out of 5. And finally I brought in Boa Fett to review a comic. As always I will be narrating because he's too cool to talk and what I'm calling Boa Fett Reviews. Bobo's reviewing this week, Star Wars Issue 3, written by Brian Wood and Arbor Carlos Deonta. And this takes place between the New Hope and Empire Strikes Back as the Rebel Alliance is looking for a new base of operations and looking for the Empire Spy. Another solid issue, Dark Horse has always done justice by the Star Wars franchise. Fed only had one problem with this issue. He found Leia's attitude towards Luke creepy. Real, real wrong. Some twisted shit. It's hard for Fett to admit this, but Han Solo and Darth Vader stole the show, but only because, again, he does not appear in this issue. Fett is the ultimate scene stealer. The artwork is gorgeous, and Fett rates this 4 out of 5 stars. Did you know we have a Facebook? And I know you have one too. Don't give me the line of, oh, no we don't, because no one believes that. So go like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us, because all the cool kids are doing it. Check out the other more awesome geeks, and stay geeky. Here's some other unknown fact. I only play Guns N' Roses November Rain in November. For the rest of the year, I don't listen to that song.